Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us. That the Lord has made, I, you, we will rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord shall be praised and it will be great. That's our mantra, as it were, as a people of God. And if you have not yet been able to use that as yours, then you need to join us as God's people. Amen. Find a house of God. Find a man of God. Talk to your co-worker who knows God and say, I want to get saved. And I know that person is going to pray for you and bring you your deliverance. So good morning. I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan. On behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center, the house of champions, where worship is a doing word, a verb, and not a noun, welcoming you to our program. It's your date with destiny. Amen. And do we announcing from up front that at the branches, we have reopened for physical uh, occupation on a Sunday morning. So this morning, this morning, you can go to any of four branches in Sangri Grandi, Boystong, in Faizabad, uh, on the main road to uh, Separia from Faizabad, in uh, where else we have? Yes, in Shogwanas, on the same site of Calvary Revival Center, 100 Edinburgh Road, going down, uh, as we say, on the back road from Shogwanas, going down to Chase Village. You can go there and you will get a word from God in Tobago. Palm Eagles Drive. And of course, in Antigua, you could call up somebody and tell them right at the corner of Market and High Street, upstairs, Harper's Building. And the glory of God will be in the place this Sunday morning. So I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan, on behalf of my wife, we say to you, don't miss this opportunity. Amen. And we, we have been. I mean, singing this song for the last how many years, how many months, we should say, during the COVID. Uh, last uh, Saturday, it was two years, the second anniversary of the first infection of COVID-19 being detected in Trinidad. And you are here. Hallelujah to view this program this morning. It means that God has kept you. Yes, it's God that has kept you. Amen. And we believe that the healing of the land has begun. We've been prophesying it for months with this song. Heal our land, Lord. Heal our land. Apostle Gemma and I are releasing it. Receive the truth. Amen. Heal our land, Lord. Heal our land. Heal all land, Lord, heal all land. On every woman, girl, boy, and man. Pour out your spirit, Lord, and heal all land. Heal all land, Lord, heal all land. Heal all land, Lord, heal all land. On every woman, girl, boy, and man. Pour out your 
out your spirit, Lord, and heal your life. Speak to us, Lord. Speak, Speak and we will listen. Yes, Lord. Teach, Teach and we will learn. And all we just said, we will be empowered. Send us and we'll go. Speak, speak, and we will listen. Teach, and we will learn. Anoint us and we'll be empowered. Send us and we will go. Where will we go? We'll go to the highways and the byways. Proclaiming the gospel of peace, we'll go to our next, our next door neighbors, to the ends of the earth we reach. we will go, we will go to the highways and the byways, proclaiming the gospel of peace. We will go to our next door neighbors, to the ends of the earth we will reach. So, heal all that, Lord, heal all that. Heal all that, Lord, heal all that. On every woman, girl, boy, and man, pour out your spirit, Lord, and heal all that. Heal all land, Lord. Heal all land, Lord. Heal all land. Whichever land you live in. Heal all land, Lord. Whichever nation you are in. Heal all land. On every woman, girl, boy, and man. Lord, just praise your land. Heal all land. Speak to us, Lord. Speak, and we will listen. Teach us, Jesus. Teach. And we will learn, anoint us, anoint us and we'll be empowered. Send us and we will go. Speak, Lord. speak, and we will listen. Teach, and we will learn. Anoint us and we'll be empowered. Oh, Send us and we'll go. We'll go to the highways and the valleys, proclaiming the gospel of peace. We'll go to our next door neighbors, to the ends of the earth. We will reach, we will go through the highways and the byways, proclaiming the gospel of peace. We will go to our next door neighbors, to the ends of the earth. We will reach, so heal our land, Lord, heal all land, Lord, heal our land, Lord, heal our land. On every woman, girl, boy, and man, pour out your spirit, Lord, and heal your land. Right, so now you're going to hear us minister together. Right now we are dealing with, yes, self-governance, the principles and practice of self-governance. And the baseline is that the only way I could declare that I am governing myself or practicing self-governance is when I give my life, I surrender my life to the governance of my life by God. Amen? So receive this installment right now. When the, when the scripture tells us straight uh, that a good name <laughs> is better to be had mm -hmm. than silver and a goal, than silver and gold. Mm -hmm. We must pay attention. Who said that? The wisest man, Solomon. And lots of people who are, are, are wise in their own, mm -hmm. what's it wise in their own conceit, conceit or something yeah. mm -hmm. so, realize at a point in time, at a point in time, if you keep rising and your foundation is not strong, you're going to topple over. Jack and Jill went up a hill uh -huh. to fetch a pail of water. 
Jack, Jack fell, fell down, down. And broke his crown. You know? And then Jill, Jill came tumbling came after. Tumbling. Uh, Those are um, a long ta- time. Um, uh, they call them again. Nursery uh, rhymes. Nursery rhymes were powerful. But, but you, they you, were loaded. You said they were um, satires. Yes, satires. They were I never loaded. realized that until right. you said that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's amazing. And we must not suffer from the Jack and Jill syndrome. Mm-hmm. God has given us his word as foundational material. That's why David said, don't sit down where this corn fuller. Mm-hmm. Don't take counsel from the ungodly. They don't know a thing mm-hmm. about staying mm-hmm. the course. Mm-hmm. They would do this, they would mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. And believe that their money will take them out. Mm-hmm. Their connections mm-hmm. will take them out. Oh, well, I know so-and-so. Mm-hmm. All I have to do is to call so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Uh, but may I tell you, even so-and-so, ducking too. Mm-hmm. Dodging too. Because there are some stuff that uh, uh, um, they're trying to sit down on like the partridge. Mm-hmm. But we prophesy that we who are kingdom. Yes. And may I tell you, even if you have... Uh, um, committed an infraction, but you are walking with God now, we are proclaiming that his covering. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. His covering is going to keep us. And so we have to Hallelujah. teach our children a very small mm-hmm. um, ethics and morals. Ethics and morals. Because I, I want to say that um, there are many people who were unethical and immoral and maintained very good success. Right. Right. But um, it caught up with them. For example, uh, what about this cyclist, this international cyclist? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. for years. For, for years. I mean, decades. He was the. Right? Even when, um, the, as a youngster, because the they, France guy. they used to have um, cycling in Palo Seco. Right. So the interest in, in cycling was, was really there, high. Yeah. Right? And for years. Hmm. So, and it's only in his retirement that they found out. That they found out. And they stripped him yep, of yep, everything, everything that he won. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, um, he even had to pay back monies to mm-hmm, certain organizations. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, then what about this runner, this little girl who yeah, was yeah, Olympic yeah. winner, Marilyn Jones is her name. I can't remember what was her first Something name. Something so, yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. she got away for a long yeah, time. Yeah. She was also in retirement right. when they stripped her. So sometimes if I am immoral or unethical, um, I, I get away for years with something, and mm-hmm. even when you leave the um, the area of where you function, mm-hmm. of activity, yeah. yeah, because and what happens to you? Sometimes your children suffer, mm-hmm. the generation mm-hmm. because I might be old, I may have died, mm-hmm. and yet my father now is name in scandal, and right. they strip him posthumously and all that kind of thing. So we are saying, mm-hmm. listen to me, there don't don't do no any shortcut if you mm-hmm. are kingdom citizen, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. remain mm-hmm. ethical. And stick to morality because sometimes the laws are not really what God says because there are laws that are now in place that contradict and contravene the word of God. Definitely. So we can't say, well, it's legal. No, we have to ch- judge it by whether it's more uh, morally right. or ethically correct and it's truth. That's right. And the Bible says, thy word is it's truth. True. Amen. Amen. So we, we're going to pull here, but note, note. That when we come to know Christ as Savior, we put all of those things under the cross. Mm-hmm. If even when we know Christ as Savior, mm-hmm. we run into these headwaters, mm-hmm. we put it under the cross too and draw from Him the strength mm-hmm. to stand mm-hmm. tall mm-hmm. and strong. Because he is that kind of a God. You go through scripture and you will see, you say, do in what is it? Um, first, no, hear me first, Isaiah. No, God say first Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. Where, in fact, you go to verse 18 first. And he says, What well, though your sins be as scarlet, scarlet mm-hmm. they shall be as white as snow. And then he says, If mm. You're willing and obedient. and obedient. You see, after he has washed mm-hmm, us, mm-hmm. we have to now mm-hmm. institute, mm-hmm. develop a mm-hmm. regime of I.I. Captain, yes. whatever you wish. Mm-hmm. But remember, if 
a tall you slip, don't continue sliding mm -hmm. because God has already invested mm -hmm. in you and vested in you mm -hmm. an authority to pull yourself up right. by the bootstrap, as it were, and speak to yourself and declare, I'm better than this. And come back to the cross. Amen. Come back to the blood bath. Get a good blood bath. No. Amen. We want you to know that uh, our first son, Donnelly, has his book up on, yes, on Amazon. In fact, he has his books, eight books. And the latest is A New Mind Skin, A New Understanding of my purpose in the marketplace as a kingdom citizen. Our second son, uh, Dion, and his wife, they have what they call the marriage confessional. And every two weeks, they actually produce a video. Go up on their website, Duncan's Inspire. Duncan's Inspire. Dot com and you will get their um, offerings. Amen. And in addition to that, we give God praise that wherever you are, you can log in to us on DDWC TV, YouTube, DDWC videos, Facebook, or ddwc.tv live stream and receive our services on a Sunday, like today, 9 a.m., on Thursday and a Friday at 7 p.m., same platforms. And in October last, we had, on the 29th, uh, Friday night, we had what we call a midnight cry and different uh, covenanters delivered, I mean, some serious declarations, prophetic declarations over the church and over the nation. And uh, we've been featuring uh, some of them. We are now at the stage where we are getting our ample ministry, ample ministry, yes, and two of the officers, Joan Howell and Nicole Glasgow, will be proclaiming prophetically from 2 Corinthians 4, 3 to 6, obedience wins the war, anointing. So, just receive it. Evening to our apostles and all online viewers. Tonight, Ampro joins with our fellow intercessors to release the obedience wins the war anointing. As we begin, let's first read 2 Corinthians 4 verses 3 to 6 in the New Living Translation. If the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, it is hidden from people who are perishing. Satan, who is the god of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord, and we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. Disobedience is a spirit which has been unleashed in our country and I dare say into the world. We see it daily in our society, in our schools and even in our parliament. As kingdom citizens, we are called to walk and live a life of obedience to God and to his word. Unfortunately, there are many who refuse to even listen to the word of God, much less live by it. This scripture shows that those from whom the word is hidden, because of their disobedience, will be led down a path of destruction. Many of these people are our own family and friends. 
we as kingdom citizens have to fight against the spirit of disobedience and join the battle to ensure that our friends and family are freed from the powers of darkness and walk in the light of Jesus Christ. So tonight as we embark on this battle, let us join hearts and minds to defeat the spirit of disobedience by declaring God's word over those living in darkness that the light of Jesus Christ will shine in their hearts. Let us declare that the minds of those who have been blinded by the God of this world will be set free and they will be able to see the glorious light of the good news. Join with us as we prophetically declare God's word against the spirit of disobedience and release the obedience wins the war anointing in Jesus' name. I now turn you over to Sister Nicole Glasgow who will release this prophetic prayer. Father Lord, we give you the praise, we give you the honor, and we give you the glory, Lord. For there is none like you, Father, for you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. Father, we declare tonight by your anointing, by your grace, that obedience wins the war. Father Lord, we release the anointing to obey over Divine Destiny Worship Center, over the Covenanters, and over the Body of Christ, Lord, your church. That this is a season that we will walk in alignment to your will, to your word, to your purpose, Lord, and we rebuke the spirit of disobedience, the spirit of a hardened heart, Father, but a mind that is moldable, a mind that is, and a heart that is set to walk in obedience. And we declare, Father, when the anointing to obey, Father, your word and your purpose, Lord, is manifested in our lives, in our body, in the body of Christ. Lord, we declare, Father, we will not only just win the war, but we will live a life of victory, a victorious life, Father. So, Father, we stand here tonight, Lord, with one voice trumpeting that obedience wins the war. And therefore, the anointing to obey, Father, we declare by your authority from in this night, Lord Father, as the night passes into the morning and as the time changes into seasons, Lord, we declare that that's the mandate that Every believer who hears this word, Father, will receive the anointing to walk in obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. And uh, we want you to, of course, s tap into what's available at Divine Destiny. Amen. So you can call our office at 633-3780 from tomorrow morning at 10 amen and you will get somebody to speak to you there if you want to get saved you want to come back to jesus you do just that amen and we want you by god's grace to make a decisive declaration lord i will serve you so until we meet again I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan, on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, declaring to you, you began life as a winner. Don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You are a God idea. Because when God made you, he had destiny on his mind. God bless you until we see you in person. Remember again, at headquarters in Diego Martin, we are not gathering as yet, but in our branches, yes, from 9 a.m. Bless you. Hi, everybody. I am Leah. And I'm Dion. And we are the, the Duncans. Duncans. Listen, we're here to tell you about a project the Lord has given to us called The Marriage Confessional. It is geared to what married couples, those that are on the road to marriage, and those that want to get married one day. So join us. Definitely. You know, and that's very important. And I remember vividly 
when we were starting our counseling journey, our counselor, who was our pastor, uh, asked, asked me the question, uh, what are your concerns? What, what's one thing that concerns you going into marriage? And this was before we even got into any of the content of our lessons. And immediately I responded, infidelity and divorce. Hmm. And I shocked myself. Yeah. Why would I say infidelity and divorce? Right. I came from a uh, 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 home with both my mother and father, happily married. In fact, my parents' relationship still inspires me. It inspires countless others across the nations, mm -hmm. uh, the, the relationship that they still have to this day. And their relationship has been rock solid for, for many, many years. So why would I feel that way? When we started to dive into the, into the, into the point, into the topic, you know, I started to remember and uh, I started to understand that both my parents came from broken relationships. Mm -hmm. Now, on one side, there was a long lasting and fruitful marriage that ended in an unceremonious divorce. On the other side, there was abandonment and rejection. And even though I was a little baby when one incident happened, and I wasn't even born when the other incident happened, it still shaped my mindset going into marriage. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine That's something deep. that I did not personally experience mm -hmm. was shaping my mindset going into marriage, and I didn't know much about it, but all I knew was, I don't want to get divorced and I don't want to deal with infidelity, whether mm -hmm. on the uh, giving end or on the receiving end. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though you are dealing with an experience, and this is for anyone out there, you're dealing with an experience in the past that you think, oh, well, that doesn't affect me or, or that was my personal thing that happened to my parents or that happened to my aunt or my uncle. Mm -hmm. A lot of these experiences can shape your mindset. Mm -hmm. And they could have an effect. They could yeah. have an effect on your marriage. What yeah, are your so thoughts? Both, so in your case, both your parents, they came from homes where those negative, negative experiences then impacted you yes. as we were going into marriage. Wow, that's really deep. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, in my case, not very different in a way because uh, I came from a home, as, as some of you would know, that where my parents separated when I was a young girl. I was a young girl growing up, my parents separated. And it's interesting because I actually went into my notes from our premarital counseling sessions. I, I can't remember which one. And I was just looking through and there was one question in particular that jumped out at me. And the question read, I desire my marriage to differ from my parents' marriage in these ways, and I listed a few ways. But the first answer, my first answer was, I want to stay together forever. I want to stay together forever. Wow. And that literally just echoed uh, what you said, right? through Jesus Christ. This has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.